and welcome to Caribbean Connections, Caribbean Airlines Thought Leadership Series, where we sit and chat with leaders from across the region to get the inside scoop of how they have achieved success and to provide a platform so they can share their perspective on issues impacting the Caribbean and the world. I am Dion Legault, the Head of Corporate Communications at Caribbean Airlines, and I am delighted to host this series of conversations. I am Dion Legault, the Head of Corporate Communications at Caribbean Airlines. We're on location in Guyana. Behind me, towering into the Guyanese skyline, is the brand new Pegasus Suites and Corporate Center, the bold vision of entrepreneur Robert Badal. Come with me as we chat with Mr. Badal to get the inside scoop on how his dream became this reality. Mr. Badal, we've been speaking. We met before we spoke about your accomplishments thus far, which was so insightful. So thank you for sitting with us again to look specifically at the 100 million US dollar corporate center and Pegasus Suites. This has been hailed as the biggest single investment by a Guyanese businessman. And the new facility is simply magnificent. It stands out here at the skyline here in Georgetown. It's two buildings comprising 100 executive suites and 180,000 square feet of grade A corporate offices and restaurants. Can you tell us how was this even conceived? And what was the journey like to see this project move from a paper concept to the reality of its existence? Thanks again, Dion. Uh, uh, thank you for being back. And uh, well, uh, to start, I, when I wake up in the morning, uh, I would say to myself, when did this happen? You know, and I guess a lot of people uh, in the city have been saying the same because this facility was constructed during the pandemic when we were locked down. We started Foundation Works early, end of 2018, early 2019. And uh, in end of 2019, the pandemic, our borders were closed all early 2020. So a lot of people haven't seen this building going up. They, they would have seen works being done to the foundation and the driving because we had to go 100 feet down wow. on a one meter width pile, drill and pour concrete and steel. So they would have seen that, but they have never had the opportunity. And suddenly, after two and a half, uh, years of the pandemic, they've seen this building already erected. So it's come as a surprise to many. So I myself, I'm amazed at the, 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 the success in getting this project done. This project was conceived uh, the day I took over this hotel because I looked across and I see the land space there that was unutilized. Uh, at, at, at like about 40% of the property not utilized, being a dump site um, uh, occupied by an elderly man uh, who cut the grass to sustain himself by selling it to cattle farmers who pass by. And I say, look, this will be my opportunity to add engrave my handprint on this property. I bought the original property, but here is the opportunity for me to build it. And over the years, I form in my mind what I need to do. And I had the idea on a model that hadn't been used in the region. 
most of the hotels, they will have shops and they will have restaurants, but they haven't gone into the, the office segment. Uh, and my concept was to have uh, elegantly furnished large spaces because the suites here are between uh, 700 and 1100 square feet. The corner one here is 1100 square feet, like an apartment where expats could, could come and stay for a long uh, period and they want elegantly furnished spaces and they would have the opportunity to live upstairs and work downstairs if we have grade A offices. So the concept of the two tower came in. And then I had to fashion, how will I fit in this small space, about three acres, 300,000 square feet of spaces. So I had to get the architects and the engineer to make it work. The original design was 20 stories. Then when the 10, 15 stories, the tender came in, it's say $113 million away. Where would I have that money? <laughs> you know, I said, cut it down to 12 stories. You know, so that was the genesis of it. Um, but now, you know, I walk this property every day during this, this construction because my office is over there and I like to walk around. I like to see things. It's a good educational experience for me, not being aware of the engineering, the science, the technical drawings and all that goes into it. I can visually admire a building, but all the engineering from the air quality to the plumbing to the air conditioning, the electrical, all the interior decor was new to me. You know, so I walk and I probably walk a million miles during that period. I would have walked around the globe must be three times. <laughs> you know, and I meet a lot of, uh, of the staff there talking to them. Well, the Chinese couldn't speak English, but their managers speak, spoke English. Um, the Haitians, very little English. Um, some of the Venezuelan, very little English or no English, but I interact in many ways and I see the difficult times they have had, mainly as a result of, of the COVID protocol, the restrictive nature of having a mass and have to toil in the hot sun. Um, day after day, every day, from early morning to nine o'clock in the night. Um, in a city and a country they never heard of, thousands of miles away from families and friends and the difficulty and the anxiety that they would have been going through their mind. And I look at it and every two weeks I see another floor and another floor and another floor. And while they were toiling, I was impatient saying, you know, could we do another floor faster? Um, when another pane of the curtain wall will go up, you know, I'll talk in my mind, it's better I go to Trinidad and come back. And by then they will finish another floor, you know? The impatience that sets in, but generally I'm very patient. But we executed this, this project well, and we lost eight months when we couldn't bring in the technical, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing people, because a building of this size has certain engineer requirements. Um, we have to follow all the codes. We follow American and European building codes, right? Which are very advanced. And uh, we design our spaces and we select our materials and dispose of our waste in line with LE, LEED certification, certain requirements as regards our air quality in the building, our windows, our lawns, all these were technical things and new to me. But we, we manage it well. Uh, I give credit to the people that work here. Um, the project manager speaks fluent English from Hong Kong, and I give credit to him as well. And all our suppliers and, and support staff, and you know, it, it has been an, an amazing um, project. And uh, when I conceive this and what I'm seeing today, it's even more beautiful than the rendering that, uh, that were created, you know. So it has been a significant journey here. And uh, um, 
it's my contribution to this city and my country. And I think the people that come to our shores and the people in Guyana and everyone will, will certainly enjoy um, this, this facility. Uh, that has been my motivation throughout. Um, uh, looking at my own experiences on the other side, the memories that have been built there over the years and the same will be here in this facility. And um, I thank the support of the government and, and all the ministries for supporting this project and make life easy for us. So all in all, it was a tremendous undertaking. Um, the biggest investment in this city's history in the real estate sector and in, in hotels. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of it. As you should be, as indeed you should be. What an awesome mark to leave on the city, a tremendous legacy in its own right. You've had many business successes. This one, another major step. What's next? <laughs> a regular question I fear a lot <laughs> at the end of every interview. But I haven't thought of that as yet. But looking, up of, looking at what we have been doing from the start of my business career and what I like to do is to expand what I do, expand current businesses, make, make them stronger, um, expand into the poultry sector, um, expand maybe in the hotel sector, perhaps, but um, uh, I haven't given thought to it. But I'm guided by the fact that whatever makes me happy, whatever I, I enjoy doing, that will guide what I, I do um, uh, from here on. The work is not yet finished because now is the management side and having all the spaces occupied. We have been very successful in having a lot of office spaces because this is the only grade A building in Guyana. Uh, sitting on the Atlantic Ocean, floor to ceiling glass. I mean, uh, it's, there's no comparison regionally with a facility like this. Access to the hotel facilities in the midst of the diplomatic and the whole diplomatic and business community across from the police headquarters, a facility like this is unmatchable. So again, thank you sincerely. Thank you for your insight, sharing your knowledge. I am sure our viewers will be highly motivated and inspired by all that they have heard today. So I am Dion Legore the head of corporate communications. I am humbled, privileged to have had a wonderful conversation with Mr. Robert Badal, entrepreneur, motivator, thinker, visionary, here on location in Georgetown, Guyana. Until next time, take care. Thank you to our viewing audience. We'd love to get your feedback, so please send it to corpcom at caribbean-airlines.com. That email address, corpcom at caribbean-airlines.com. You may follow our social media channels, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at iFlyCaribbean. I am Dion Ligo, and this has been Caribbean Connections.